we took a break for a month and a lot of things happened uh, with respect to Flow and SharePoint Connector. So I wanted to go through some of the updates. These are not surprising updates. We have been talking about these since SPC, um, the SharePoint Conference North America. So let me go through some of the updates that we released. Um, first, the improvements to Flow authoring. One of the most asked uh, feature, uh, ability to copy and paste actions in your Flow because you're going to do something repeatedly, even in a Flow that is supposed to do some repetitive actions, right? That's what we built. Um, so you got support for copy and paste actions now. It should be available in your Flow portal in the designer, so you can easily copy and paste. I can show you a demo. Um, and then there was this weird behavior where if you were using an output or uh, something, um, an input as well from another action or trigger, you are not able to delete or rename that action, right? It would say that this is being used in other steps. So that has been solved. You can go delete or rename actions on which the other steps depend. Um, but if you want to make sure that things are working properly, the flow checker has been updated to ensure that it can find and report issues on, on such dependency. So another cool update, um, we do this all the time. So great to see the clipboard support and even deleting and renaming the actions is now possible. So with that, I'm going to uh, specific uh, new SharePoint actions. So the first one we released uh, is working with folders. So you can now create folders in a document library. Previously, you had to use create file, do some hack, and sort of create the folder along with the dummy file and then go back and delete. We heard you guys um, loud and clear. We wanted this to be really simple. So we have the create folder action um, in the flow uh, SharePoint connector now. Check in, check out. Another one of the key uh, scenarios that happens in uh, document scenario, you know, document uh, projects. So we're happy to announce that we have checkout, check-in, and discard checkout actions available as well. Moving along, we have uh, working with permissions. So SharePoint, modern SharePoint supports a set of permissions, um, and you can go through the UX uh, through grant access and provide access to a file, an item, um, or the list itself in SharePoint. So basically, the exact same thing um, now has been brought over to Flow, so you can actually grant access to an item or folder uh, to specific people, um, or uh, basically you can say um, stop sharing this, which basically means that um, it removes everything and just keeps the sharing to the owner. Um, so this only supports today to specific people. Um, we are planning to see how we can expand more, talking with the sharing folks to understand what implications are here. Um, modern document sets, that's also, also another feature that everybody were expecting. It, it should be 100% rolled out, at least for uh, the document sets that do not have custom homepage configured. Um, so if you do have a document, modern document set, uh, some of the things that are already available in the flow and SharePoint connector should work with that. So when a file is created in a folder, um, here replace folder as the document set, you can pick that uh, actually in the picker. Same for when a file is created or modified, and, and for a selected file, get item, request sign off, set a reminder flow. Everything should work with uh, for the files inside the document set, as well as um, if you if you actually have other triggers for specific files. So go try out those and let us know if something you see is not properly uh, working or you know it's something not uh, properly wired up as well. Um, so, but more stuff is coming up with documents that we are planning to see uh, to create a document set action available in Flow. We haven't started working on that yet, but um, it's in my backlog uh, to go and tackle that as next uh, action. So, um, along with these, we also needed to support some of the properties coming out of get item and get file, right? So if you do uh, get file, we wanted to let you know the checkout status. So you would now get is checked out, uh, whether the file is checked out or not. You also get a version number so that you can see which version number you are currently in. Um, and we also checked in the check out by property. I don't see it yet. I probably think it's, it's rolling out, but that also will give you uh, who it is checked out by if it is checked out, right? So really cool uh, op options to use in your business process to find out what is happening with the file. 
And finally, this was long overdue content approval status and approval comments also now flow through the get file and get item. So finally, you can say, hey, get the file. Is this file, what's the status? Is it draft, is it pending, is it approved objective? So those are now supported in the uh, action properties as action output properties as well. So if you were using send HTTP request and Mikhail's, uh, Mikhail Swenson's hack of how do you get moderation status, you can now get those uh, out and then use these out of the box connector outputs to go figure out what's the content approval status of a file or a document right away in your flow. Um, so um, I'll jump to demo and then come here. Um, so I have lots of things to demo, but I decided on showing something around uh, grant permission, uh, you know, grant access. Um, I'll, can you see all my three browser windows? Not yep. confirming. Okay. How we get a demo involving three users, but I think it's going to be worth it. So if you see, um, here is the user one uh, who has access to everything in this uh, projects list. Here is a second user, user two, who is going to be submitting projects, and then user three, who's only going to see the projects that are approved. So you can already see the list has been configured um, in a way that hey, only specific items are visible or there's already some logic that we do. Um, you can do that today uh, by going to uh, the list settings. And then in the advanced settings, you have item level permissions to start with. So read access, who can read, and then create an edit access and, and things like that. So you can start from a baseline of how you want this to work. So. Um, as I am the owner of the site, I'm able to see every uh, operations that are going on here, right? Um, even I can create some, and I can see John Doe has, has also created some. So um, I already have some things here by John Doe uh, created a uh, project two, which is spending. So I want to send an approval. Uh, an approval is going to go to this user, um, Chucks, and then basically once Chucks approves, you should be able to see some magic happen, right? So let me go. Uh, change the project to to get approved. So obviously I have a flow. So I'm going to go to flow. I'm going to see my approved project. And it's going to open up the approved project flow here in a second. Really simple flow, nothing more to uh, add, you know, run the flow. So that started the flow. And now uh, in a second, I should get uh, an approval request in Teams. There you go. So requested by John Doe, and here's the project link, and I, you know, I can approve or reject. So I'm going to approve, submit, and now what's going to happen um, is that if you notice, the pending um, should change to approved if the automatic update works, or we can actually refresh. But you saw. Project two now appeared for this user three, right? And as an owner, if I go and look at the project two, you can see in the manage access, I have removed everything and have access only to the user that created it, who's John Doe, and the user that I do want this approved project to be visible to. So Karen, right? So I was able to do this in the flow. So let's look at what the flow is doing here. So the flow is going and uh, basically using the forest selected item, and then I'm getting the item. And here you can see I'm checking the content approval status. So you can see right now there is a bug here where it, it actually shows a description as well for the comments associated with the content approval. It should just be content approval comments. We'll probably fix that soon. But there's also content approval status, and it clearly gives you the documentation. It can be one of the following, draft, pending, approved, or rejected. So I'm using that property to see if it's equal to pending. So I'm ensuring that this flow does not run for you know, approved uh, documents. And if it is approved uh, or something else that's not pending, I can handle my logic in the, uh, in the steps here. So if it is pending, I'm going to create an approval. This is the new approval available uh, in Flow. And then 
what it does is it creates the approval, but it does not send any notification. So I can even go and say enable notifications, which by default only sends to uh, email um, to not uh, be available, right? So I'm, I'm going to disable that option. And then I'm going to post an adaptive car as the flow bot to a user in Teams. So then I choose the user who's going to be the owner uh, property from, from this metadata in my list. And then I'm going to create, get the adaptive card from this create an approval uh, action, which is pretty clever, right? So you want an adaptive card. Adaptive card is used across the platform. So we are able to now get the actual adaptive card JSON from the create an approval. So we can pass it along to the flow bot that knows how to respond to those adaptive cards. So that is being passed. And then I wait for approval, right? So then I go into a waiting state. So now what happened you saw here was I got approve and reject, right, in my teams. So that basically enables uh, me to now approve this right here in my teams. And if you are using teams all the go, you can see all of your approvals here, much, much, much better than email, right? And once I approve, the Flowbot knows how to handle this request. So it approves behind the scenes the actual request. Your flow will now continue. And now I go and check if the outcome is approved. I'm going to basically set content approval status to approve, right? My job is done here. I'm going to approve that. But now I can go change some internal things for that item. I can actually now remove everybody, right? So I can stop sharing this item. So all I say is, what's the library, what's the site, and what's the item ID I'm operating on? And once I've removed this, only the owners will have access. And then I go and add the user uh, that basically initiated this uh, flow and the person that I really want to have access. In this case, Karim and, and the user email who's coming from the user that triggered the flow. So it's as simple as that. You select the site, the, the list or library, and then ID. And again, if you notice some of the things you are seeing here, we're trying to formulate and have sort of similar actions. So you see list our library name. So we have, you know, we didn't create two actions like grant access to an item and then grant access to a file. Uh, so we basically uh, have grant access to an item which refers to a list item or a file or a folder, right? And you'll get all of those in the list here. And then roles we have can edit and can view. Um, and then you can say any message and then uh, you can actually notify. So notify will actually trigger the SharePoint email that you get in the SharePoint UX. Um, so that's how this works. And if you want to map this to the actual user experience, remember flow is for end users. So we, we basically build this um, similar to how end user operations work in SharePoint. Um, if you hadn't used Flow and if you had to do this manually, right, you would have gone to basically, um, let's, um, you'd have gone here, um, selected the item, you could have approved, reject, could have used this modern approve, reject panel here to change it to approved. And then you would have gone to either through the manage access or in the info pane, you got manage access, right? In here, you have two options. You can use sharing links. We already have created a sharing link action in Flow that basically does not change the underlying permission or object, uh, the, the uh, user uh, options, but it just creates a sharing link, uh, which is very efficient as well. Or you can manage the direct access, uh, which basically uh, changes the permission model behind the scenes. Now you are breaking inheritance and all those complex things that we were very um, familiar in the old days of SharePoint and how we do it. Um, it still happens behind the scenes, but it's much more um, you know, managed at the sharing object level rather than at a basic SharePoint level. So it works across and syncs across groups, for example, and other workloads that we have. And if you see, grant access is right there. Um, this is exactly what the action is doing. Um, enter the name. It's like selecting a site, selecting the list, um, entering the recipients. What are the roles? What is the message? And do we have to notify people, right? This is basically what the action is doing today. So we basically mimic this exact uh, user flow to also have it in our uh, flow designer. 
So that's how the grant access uh, permission work. Um, of course, I think here, um, if you see, you do get kind of like my team members and, and my team owners. This is something we're trying to work with a uh, flow team to understand how we get more than just people um, to also have these sort of, uh, you know, um, members group and, and especially if you're working in Office 365 groups, how do you bring that forward? So that's something I would say it's a limitation right now, but we can, um, you know, we are, we are looking into how we go solve this problem. But first step, release the action, have it working with basic scenarios of ha having it assigning to people. Um, so that's the grant access uh, demo. And uh, to quickly show you um, one of the cool things I like in create folder. Um, so if you search for create folder, you will get create new folder. We support creating recursive folders. So you have the documentation right there, uh, folder one slash folder two. So you can just create, um, you know, simply folder one slash folder two, uh, folder three. SharePoint will figure out which one is missing, which one needs to be created along this recursive pattern and, and create the folders accordingly. Um, so yeah, pretty cool uh, functions. I think um, these are some really uh, important steps in your business process. And by the way, all of these we took from the Flow Ideas Forum, which is a Flow user wise forum. So we went ahead and said, hmm, what is missing? Of course we can go you know, make a one-to-one -one mapping to say SharePoint designer, here's the actions. Um, Flow, oh yeah, we don't miss some actions. But you also wanted to go in and check what our customers are uh, complaining about or what are the feedback they're submitting. And these actions we hear every time, whether it's in the user wise forum or if it's a customer call that we go talk to or if it's a SharePoint conference or Ignite, every time we hear these. So to Vesa's point, please do keep giving us feedback. It's very, very important. Yeah, sometimes product development is hard. Trust me, it is not magic. It's not going to just come up literally in a month. Um, so it's going to take time. But unless we know where to start and, and what things to start with, that time just gets bigger and bigger. So please keep giving us feedback. Submit the um, you know, flow ideas in the flow ideas forum where you got much bigger audience, not just SharePoint, to also um, you know, provide uh, feedback on um, even the flow designer stuff and even SharePoint stuff. So with that, um, you know, I've been presenting a lot on every other Thursday. Um, seems like I have been like cannibalizing the entire uh, you know, makers topic. Uh, so if you do have some interesting topics to present, um, let us know, reach out to us. You, you guys know how to reach out to us and uh, where to reach out to us. So um, I do want to collect topics for, you know, the next few calls um, so that, you know, I'm not the center stage and I want the community to, to show us awesome stuff being built with SharePoint Flow Power Apps. So if you do have some uh, topics, do let us know. And that's it today from me. Um, I'll, I'll look at the chat as well for any questions. Thank you, Chucks. Mm -hmm.